Antimicrobial resistance, or AMR, is a global health threat that currently kills 700,000 people per year and is predicted to kill 10 million people per year by 2050. This AMR week, we will be focusing on solutions, including diagnostic testing and antimicrobial stewardship. So what is antimicrobial stewardship, or AMS? Well, AMS is a systematic approach to promoting better use of antibiotics by individuals and health services. The aim is to stop the incorrect use of antibiotics and antimicrobials and ensure the right person gets the right medicine at the right time. Diagnostic testing provides a quick and effective way of doing this. So, the British In Vitro Diagnostics Association, or BIVDA, is campaigning for greater use of these tools outside of lab settings. One example would be more use of diagnostics at triages in A&E departments. 70% of patient information comes from diagnostics, and correct use of antibiotics minimises the growth of drug-resistant pathogens, which improves patient outcomes. Having diagnostic technology close at hand also means that critically ill patients with suspected infections, such as sepsis or meningitis, can avoid life-changing damages or even death. Developing new antibiotics is a difficult and expensive process, and when used incorrectly, they quickly succumb to resistances, which is a huge waste of time and money. The government's recent white paper on infection management found a gap between diagnostics and antimicrobial therapeutics in our healthcare systems, which is contributing significantly to the spread of AMR. The paper identifies the need for diagnostic tools to be deployed to the front line of our NHS services. It also states that to deliver long-term solutions to infection management, appraisal of therapeutics and diagnostics must be considered in tandem. Where already available, companion diagnostics should be used to improve care and address AMR. In short, we need a system where tests inform prescriptions. The National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, or NICE, recommends that there should be greater credence given to diagnostic interventions that work earlier in the treatment pathway. BIVDA members want to discourage choosing cheaper prescription antibiotics over more costly but more effective diagnostic testing. During the COVID pandemic, there was greater use of diagnostics, which helped control the spread of infection. BIVDA would like to see this now embedded within the health system. We are joined today by Doris Ann Williams, MBE, Chief Executive of BIVDA, to discuss the vital role of diagnostics in fighting AMR. So, Doris Ann, thanks so much for joining us today. And could you please tell us why is there an increase in AMR in the UK and also globally? There's been an increase in antimicrobial resistance pretty much ever since we first had penicillin um, way back Uh, in the 1930s. So it's because bacteria and other microorganisms such as fungi uh, mutate far more rapidly than any other sort of organism. And so they can change um, and develop uh, protection against the drugs. So we've got to look at um, the profile of of, uh, the microorganism when we're targeting them with antibiotics. But it's also because we've overused them. So we've been putting, in the developed world, we've been putting antibiotics into foodstuff for animals to make them grow faster and and make them um, not pick up any infections that might slow their growth or impair the product, the meat product. We've been putting them into paint to stop fungal growth in paint. Um, And in the uh, developing world, there's a wide uh, misuse of antibiotics where people are overusing them. And for, in many countries, India is a huge example, where people can buy them over the counter. They don't even need to have a doctor's prescription. So uh, they're treating themselves with the wrong antibiotics quite often. And that's just adding to the picture. Great answer. And um, what is antimicrobial stewardship or AMS? And what should we be doing? Antimicrobial stewardship is um, the term given to looking 
what we want people to do to look after the use of antibiotics. So it's a set of actions to promote the responsible use of antimicrobial drugs, both for individuals at national level and global level, across human health as well as animal health and use in the environment. There is also um, a, a website for antimicrobial stewardship and people can sign up and agree a pledge such as, you know, I, I will, won't ask for antibiotics unnecessarily. So that's showing their individual support for antimicrobial stewardship. Great answer. Thank you. And why are in vitro diagnostics so key to battling antimicrobial resistance? Diagnostics are really important because they, they do several things. First of all, you can use a diagnostic to determine whether an infection is bacterial or viral. Uh, if it's a caused by a virus, of course, you can't have antibiotics. They won't work. Um, you can streamline the therapeutic um, uh, targeting so you can once you've identified an infection you can identify the best antibiotic for that bacteria so that's using blood culture um, you culture up the uh, the patient's blood and you can see what causative agent is and then you can look at uh, the susceptibility to antibiotics for that microorganism so you can tailor the treatment that's not rapid diagnostics so what we want to see is more um, rapid diagnostics being used earlier in the pathway so that you can actually uh, stop infection faster. But having an exquisite sort of profile does mean that you can actually use the right antibiotic at the right time and that, that's the important thing. And what sort of changes are you advocating for in the healthcare system? Well, I think we need to see global system surveillance so around the world everyone needs to be much more aware but for uh, locally for the UK we'd really like to see more testing done in the community so that people have an effective triage of, of their symptoms and they get antibiotics appropriately using diagnostic tests to provide more information rather than just going on the clinician's feel and understandably um GPs are very concerned that people could develop a, a, a more serious infection rapidly. So, you know, they're not prescribing antibiotics just because they feel it's not, uh, they feel the patient wants them. They they are doing it quite often for good clinical reasons. Um, it's a, a very risk averse type of, of of practice when you're when you're treating people. Um, so it's it's not something you can be cavalier about. But having uh, information from diagnostic tests will help them guide their treatment. Uh, what we do need to see is, is the funding streams sorted out in the NHS so that it does enable um, primary care to have access to the tests um, in a way they can afford. Wonderful. And could you tell us a bit about the history of BIVDA? Um, BIVDA's been around we've just celebrated our 30th anniversary this year uh, so it started in 1992 um, with a realization from the UK industry that they needed a voice in Europe as the EU was starting to develop regulation for our sector so um, everyone got together uh, it started off really looking just at regulation and then over during the 90s gradually adding on extra um, activity so looking at procurement by the NHS, looking at different um, disease threats and where diagnostics played a role. And so the point we're at today is where we're sort of supporting the industry and acting as a voice for the industry, um, talking to government um, and other stakeholders like the MHRA. And what have been some of the key developments in the field over the past 30 years? There's some, been uh, an incredible um increase in, in the technology for the industry. So if you think about monitoring blood glucose um, by individuals with diabetes, they've gone a bit like mobile phones where they can uh, they can monitor their own uh, blood glucose levels with increasing accuracy with an increasing convenience. Um, so the, the, their meters have developed to a point where actually now they, they've even got sensors they can wear uh, and have a continuous reading whenever they need one. Um, in laboratories, 
automation has been amazing. So um, where it used to take not that long ago, maybe 40 years ago, it took a week to get a result of a test. You now have that result in a fully automated way, quite often from a blood sample within a couple of minutes. And the whole process is completely automated. So you put a, a blood tube on one end and a result comes out the other end. Um, so if there's no manual operation at all. It's it's a very different skill set that's needed to run those sort of instruments to the old ways of doing things. And of course, um, miniaturization. So a lot of laboratory level tests could actually be done at the point of need on miniaturized equipment that doesn't need a scientist to run it. So anyone could be trained to use them quite quickly uh, in a healthcare setting. Um, that's used very effectively um, in the veterinary pr profession because, largely because the, the, the animals, the, the patients there, have owners which uh, pay for the testing. Um, but it's not always necessary. So it's a case of let's do the tests, the right tests at the right place at the right time, not just because technology has enabled it. And Doris, how did you become involved with BIVDA? Um, well, I've always worked in the diagnostic industry. Um, during the 90s, as BIVDA became an organisation, uh, I came to it uh, as a representative of the different companies that I worked for during the 90s. And then um, as we reached the end of the decade, I was looking for a new challenge myself. Um, and the role at BIVDA became available and so I thought, well, that's something that would be uh, an interesting job. I'm passionate about diagnostics, so what better thing to do than represent um, the industry in the UK? Um, applied for it and was lucky enough to get it. That was 2001, and here I am 21 years later, still getting out of bed every day with the belief that diagnostics is making a huge difference to healthcare. Do you think the COVID pandemic helped raise awareness of the importance of in vitro diagnostics? I think the pandemic has one of, been one of the most successful things to raise awareness of the role of diagnostics within the general population. You know, I've got people asking me questions, whereas before there was never really any great interest in, in what I did. Um, people are aware of Things like specificity and sensitivity of tests, which they, you know, are mind blowing really that everyone now has that level of knowledge. And I think it's something that hopefully will continue to may remain at the front of people's minds so that they think about the information that a diagnostic test provides. And, and perhaps we'll see people being more enabled to look after their own health and get better management of any um, illnesses they have by getting the right information um, to to help them understand what's wrong with them. Brilliant. And I mean, you've been at BIVDA for over 20 years now. So what are some of the key changes that you've seen during your time there? I think the, the key thing is um, the much more awareness of, of the role of diagnostics, uh, not just in the general public, but actually within um, policymakers, within, even within the healthcare arena itself. Um, pathology and laboratory medicine is, is coming more and more to the forefront. Uh, the technology there is incredible. Um, digital technology is enabling how we look at um, uh, slides um, taken from tumours and parts of the body from looking down a microscope, um, the pathologists can now look at them on a on a computer screen and they can do that anywhere. They don't have to be in the laboratory. It enables the workforce to be much more agile. Um, they can share slides and, and get information on the pathology from colleagues, second opinions. You can um, uh, trans uh, move the information much more rapidly around the world. So all sorts of, of those sorts of uh, improvements as well. And that's the sort of thing that's been seen on the imaging side as well, with moving away from X-ray film, for example, so digitising all images. And we're here today to raise awareness of AMR amongst the general public, but would you say there's a 
good level of awareness of AMR in the UK healthcare system? Yes, I think there is um, a really good awareness now um, and probably a frustration that um, that we've got to this position where, you know, you have got to think very carefully about what you use and when you use it. Um, but certainly it's something that everyone from GPs right up to um, specialists in secondary care are very, very well aware of. And there's an awful lot of work done on stewardship within secondary care Um, led by the pharmacy um, quite often as well. Brilliant. So everything very much moving in the right direction. Yes. um, Yes, I think it's just a shame that it's taken us a while to become really alive to this threat, but that's human nature in the same way as we've ignored climate change until it's starting to really become a more imminent threat to, to the future of how we live our lives. Thank you so much, Doris Ann. You've been absolutely brilliant. And um, where can listeners go for more information, please? Uh, there's a number of places that listeners can go for more information. We have some on our website at www.vivda.org.uk or the Sepsis Trust is another good source of information. Or there's a white paper from a coalition of industry and patient charities called the Infection Management Coalition. So that's theimc.org. And there's a a really excellent white paper with recommended actions and an explanation of the threat there. 